What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you are doing well. In today's video, we're gonna be making this awesome custom drop down menu. So you'll be able to populate it with data and select an option and have this beautiful animation that you see here on the screen. And we can see here that we can select uh, from multiple different option sets and we have some awesome UI to indicate which item has been selected. We can change selection on either one. And we're gonna make this awesome sort of reusable component here that you guys can drop into any one of your apps where you wanna have a custom drop down menu like this. So let's go ahead and get started, guys. So I have an Xcode project opened up here in front of me. And we're gonna go to this view folder. I created an app folder and a view folder just to organize the files a little bit. We're gonna go here and create a new uh, Swift UI view, and it's going to be called drop down view. And we're just gonna go ahead and jump right into this man. So guys, let's go ahead and let our preview get up and running. So let's go ahead and try to figure out what we need to give to this drop down menu. So we can see here that we have a title, we have some sort of option set or list of things we can select from. And then we also have like a prompt at the beginning of it. So what I mean by that is if I, uh, you know, get out of that real quick and go back to it, when there is no selected option, we can pass in a prompt as well that just says like select. And then obviously if I go and select something, it will change to that selected option. So let's go ahead and add those parameters. We're gonna say we need a title, which is a string. We need a prompt, which is also a string. And then we need some options which is going to be an array of strings. And let's go ahead and fix our preview with this data. So we can say make prompt is select, options are, <clears throat> let's go ahead and just add some options really quick. We can say like Lambo, Ferrari, and like Aston Martin or something like that, right? Cool. So our preview has everything it needs. Now let's go ahead and get started with actually building out our UI, guys. So we are gonna start this off with a V stack. And guys, we are going to set the alignment here to dot leading. And then we're gonna create our text component and it's going to be our title. This is the little gray title that you see here that we're building right now. We're gonna say dot font is dot footnote, dot foreground style is dot gray, dot opacity is 0 0.8. And then we're gonna create another VStack. And now this is going to be the VStack for this guy that we see here, the actual drop down. So within that guys, we're gonna create an H stack. And we are going to say we want this text component. And <clears throat> right now it's just gonna be populated with our prompt. Then we're gonna add a spacer and an image, system name, chevron dot down, right? So we'll fix the width of all this in a second, guys. Um, but as you can see here, we'll, we're gonna implement this other awesome animation where it, like that chevron rotates based on whether or not the menu is expanded or not. So our chevron is gonna have some modifiers. We're gonna say dot font is dot sub headline, dot foreground style, oops is dot gray. And then we're gonna say dot rotation effect, but that's gonna come a little bit later. Um, we're gonna, where we implement the rotation effect for that image. Um, so that's looking good. Now guys, on this H stack, we are gonna give this a frame of height, which is 40 pixels. And we're gonna say dot padding is dot horizontal. And that's it for now. Okay. So next up guys, we need to actually now implement the ability to like tap on this thing and then expand our menu and show all of the menu options. So we're actually gonna create a state property to help us keep track of whether or not the menu is expanded. And just a quick intermission guys, if you want access to the source code for this project, make sure you check out our website at stephancodes.com. We're currently doing an awesome holiday sale where you get 30% off our pro courses and app templates and 20% off memberships. So becoming a member gives you complete and unlimited access to everything on the site for less than a coffee a day. And right now all plans are 20% off. So make sure you guys check that out. Also, make sure you check out our pro courses. We just launched the Swift UI Airbnb Pro Course. So this is a super awesome Airbnb clone, guys. 
It has uh, map functionality and all of this awesome stuff that you see in the Airbnb app. We have a free version on YouTube if you want to check that out. And this is our latest pro course that is available now. And once again, if you guys become a member, you get access to all of these pro courses for that monthly membership fee. So make sure you guys check out our website at stephancodes.com. Got a ton of awesome stuff on there, including the source code for this project. If you become a member, it's in the YouTube section. So make sure you guys go ahead and check that out. Now let's go ahead and get back to the video. So we're gonna create a state property here. Private var called is expanded. And basically guys, what we're gonna do is set it equal to false. And then we can now use this in our logic for showing or hiding the menu. So what we're gonna do is say, if it's expanded, show all the menu options. If it's not, we want to collapse it like this, right? So guys, let's go ahead and uh, figure out how we want to toggle this property first, right? On this H stack, we are going to say dot on tap gesture with animation dot snappy. And we're going to say is expanded dot toggle. Okay. And guys, that means now that anytime I tap on this guy here, it's going to toggle this is expanded property. So first off, to see if we're actually toggling this thing, let's come back to this image and give it a rotation effect. So basically, if it's expanded, we want to rotate it so that it looks like it's pointing up. And if not, we want to make it look like it's pointing down. So it's actually going to be pretty simple. We're going to say dot rotation effect dot degrees is expanded. Yes, we're going to say negative 180. No, zero. So let's go ahead and test this out now. So guys, we notice that if I tap on the select option or this guy right here, um, that it's going to rotate my image there beautifully. You guys could make it say positive 180 and it would just rotate it the other way. It's really up to you which one you want to do. But we now have the foundation for our logic here on how we can expand or hide our menu, right? So guys within our V stack here, let's go right here. And we're going to say if is expanded, here is where we want to show all of our menu options. So we're going to create another V stack. And we're going to say for each options, ID backslash dot self option in, we're pretty much going to create like the same H stack here, guys. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste this H stack and we're going to replace prompt with option. And we're going to change our image selection here as well. So basically, guys, if the image is selected, then or if that option is selected, then we're going to want to show a check mark, right? So we can go ahead and replace this with check mark. And we are just going to say dot font is dot sub headline. So we actually don't have the logic right now to determine which thing is selected. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like really quickly. It's not looking the best, but we are getting there slowly, right? So we can see now that as I am tapping this thing, it is expanding and hiding my options, which is beautiful. We just need to update our UI a little bit and add some sort of selection logic here as well. So guys, on this H stack, we are going to give it a frame of height. 40 pixels, just like above. And we're going to say dot padding is dot horizontal. And now we need to let's go ahead and check it out first. So that looks a lot better, right? So what we need to do now, guys, is implement our selection logic. And then we're going to finish touching up the UI and go ahead and create a couple drop downs to make sure this is all working as expected. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and go up to the top here and create a binding property and just say selection and it's an optional string. So this is going to keep track of which option is selected. And we are making it binding because we want this to be a state property in the in the parent view of the thing that is implementing this view, which we'll see in a little bit, right. So basically, I'm creating this view in like a main like content view, I want to be able to keep track of which option I've selected in that main view. So we're going to pass that along as a binding. And that'll make more sense once we actually implement this thing, or implement a couple of them back in our content view. So let's go ahead and create our binding guy right here in our preview, we can just say dot constant. And let's make it say like Lambo, or any one of the options that you have here. And let's see if we can now add our selection logic. So 
we're going to go here and we're going to say we're going to cut this image right for the check mark so hit command x and we're going to say if selection equal equal option then we want to show that option that, that hey that thing is selected right so right now it's lambo so we should see the check mark on lambo right so that looks pretty good if i change this to ferrari we should see ferrari is selected oops um i spelled ferrari wrong that's my bad right so that looks good now right so that logic is looking good. The only other thing I want us to do really quickly is gray out all of the other non-selected options, guys. So basically on this option text, we can say dot foreground style selection equals option. Yes, dot primary, no, dot gray. Primary, guys, is how we can handle dark mode here. So I believe we have to say color dot primary, which is kind of annoying. But basically, um, this is going to allow us to have dark mode support. Primary just means if we're in light mode, the text will be black. If we're in dark mode, the text will be white. So that's looking pretty good, right? So all the other options are grayed out now. So this is really coming together. Guys, now we just need to add the tap handler for selecting an option. So basically, we want to say on tap gesture of this H stack, right? So I want to go here and say dot on tap gesture with animation dot snappy selection equals option and is expanded dot toggle so basically what's this gonna what this is gonna do guys is it's gonna say hey we're gonna set the selection property to the option that the user tapped and then once they do that it's also going to collapse the menu right and guys, the last thing I want us to do in terms of our selection logic is go back up to where we have the prompt and we are going to say we want this to be our selection and just give it a default value of the prompt, right? So basically you're saying if the selection is there, then I want to show the, uh, the selected option just like we have here. But if not, I want you to just show the prompt. Okay, so that's looking really good, man. Um, Nat, next up, we can go on this VStack guys and to get this really cool like sort of animation where it looks like it's like expanding or moving like up and down like that. We can see here that it just kind of comes into like sort of fades in, but this is like like sort of a slide up animation. Swift UI gives us that basically for free. We can just go ahead and here and say dot transition dot move edge dot bottom. And you guys, we can go here and now we notice that it's kind of like coming up from the bottom there. It's not the cleanest yet, but we're gonna fix that in a little bit, don't worry. Now let's continue with our styling, guys. So what I want us to do is grab this is this if logic here, and I actually want us to put this, so go ahead and just cut all of that out with Command X, and let's put it inside of this V stack, and that looks good. Right, so now we are gonna apply some more styling here to actually get this sort of border that we see, set our width to the proper width and give it a nice shadow there as well. So guys, we're gonna go here and we're gonna say that we want a clip shape of a rounded rectangle with a corner radius of 10. And then we're gonna give it a shadow and the radius is gonna be four. And we are also gonna give it a background of dot white for now. We are gonna come back to this with dark mode support in a little bit, but we can really see that coming together now, right? So that looks super, super clean, right? And we notice that our animation is all fixed there. Everything looks like it's expanding from the correct direction and collapsing in the correct direction as well. Our rotation effect is beautiful. Our selection is working. And this has really come together really fast here, guys. This is looking really good. So what I want us to do now is just go ahead and give this a frame of a width of, let's say, 140 pixels or something, right? And you guys can adjust this width as you see fit, sort of. Um, I believe selection options should be kept pretty compact. Like it's not like you're gonna want, you could maybe want this to be the width of the entire screen. So guys, what you can do is if you want to set the width to be like a custom width, 
then you can go ahead and make that an input parameter up here. Or you could create the width once you set this thing up, right from your view that is in charge of implementing or creating this thing. Um, but for now, we're just gonna give this sort of a hard-coded width. You could even say like 150, right? And yeah, that looks pretty good, man. So that looks super, super smooth. Um, guys, let's go ahead and figure out how to implement dark mode support for this really quickly. Um, just because if you guys were to notice, if I go and make this in my dark appearance, it doesn't exactly look right. Um, so let's go ahead and figure that out. It's actually gonna be super easy. Um, we're just gonna go up to the top and we're going to look at this environment property called uh, color scheme. Var scheme. And then we're gonna go back down and say, if the scheme is dark, so if it's equal to dot dark, yes, we want black, no, we want white. And then we are also gonna change the color of our shadow, guys. So actually, yeah, we can just go here and say color uh, dot primary dot opacity 0 0.2 and the radius will be four. So that looks beautiful right there. Um, let's go ahead and see if we can actually just make this background color the primary color. Oh, that wouldn't work, it has to be inverted. Yep, so we have to do it like this. I wish they had sort of like a primary background color instead of like a primary text color, but that's not too bad for us to figure that out, right? Okay, so let's switch back to light mode just to make sure this is all good. And guys, that looks absolutely incredible. Okay, so something you guys might notice is that you have to click on the word or the chevron image here to actually expand the menu. That's a, gonna be a pretty easy fix. We can just copy and paste this line here and go and put it up on this H stack. So I can go right here and say, I wanna give that a background. And what that does, guys, is you actually like have to manually set the background to make the entire thing tappable. That's something I figured out with SwiftUI. I wish that that wasn't the case, but um, I guess that's just how it works. Now you know, you'll notice that we can tap the entire row and it will expand and hide that thing. And now what I want us to do is actually go ahead and test our selection. So that's gonna be all we need to do to implement this guy. Um, now I want us to go and create a couple dropdown menus, guys. So let's go back to our content view. I'm going to copy and paste some data here. So you guys can make two arrays of like whatever you want. This is exactly what I have in my completed application. Um, we got a bunch of, a couple different car manufacturers and now we're gonna go ahead and create these two dropdown menus. So I'm going to create a V stack with a spacing of 16 pixels and I'm gonna create a dropdown view. My title is going to be make, my prompt is going to be select options are manufacturers and i need to create this selection property so this is where this binding concept comes in guys if i want to know which thing has been selected i'm going to want to know that inside of this content view or the the view that is implementing this drop down menu right because ultimately i'll probably want to do something with that you're probably going to be using this in some sort of form or maybe some sort of like action handler where you select a property and you maybe execute an API call to fetch a different batch of data or whatever it may be. So what we're gonna do is create two state properties for this. We're gonna say state private var selected uh, manufacturer, manufacturer, I think that's how you spell it, manufacturer, right? And that is going to be an optional string and we're just gonna go ahead and pass that in here. Or we could maybe just say selected make. I think that makes it easier. All right, so selected make. And let's just go ahead and copy and paste this bad boy and create another one, dude. And let's see, this is going to be vehicle type. Prompt is select, and then we have vehicle types here. So we just pass in these different arrays and we need to create another uh, uh, selection property and this is going to be selected type and we just go ahead and pass that in there and let's go ahead and see if this stuff works guys so we're going to go here select ferrari and boom it shows ferrari selected right there and we see that that is exactly 
um, showing up as expected, right? That has the check mark next to it, indicating to us that that is the selected option. I can also expand my other drop down menu. They can be expanded simultaneously. I can collapse this one and this one will stay expanded. So that's just looking super, super smooth, guys. And we can select different options. They all have their own individual data sets linked to them and selection parameters linked to them. So this is a super awesome reusable component that you guys can drop into any one of your apps. And if you guys want access to the source code for this guy, you can go ahead and just become a member on my website at stephancodes.com. We're doing 20% off all plans right now, and that will get you unlimited access to everything on the site. That includes all of the professional app templates we have, all of the stuff we do on YouTube, like this drop down menu you just saw. We have a bunch of other awesome stuff on you uh, from our YouTube channel as well, as you guys will be able to see in all of the videos on this channel. Our pro courses are amazing. We just launched the Swift UI Airbnb pro course. And guys, there is a free version of that on YouTube and the pro version is the continuation. Same with TikTok and the Swift UI bootcamp and all of that good stuff. So guys, make sure you go ahead and check that out for less than just a coffee a day. You can become a member and get access to all of this stuff that we have on the site. And that includes app templates, pro courses, and all of that. So make sure you check out our website at stephancodes.com. Guys, check me out on Instagram. My username is in the description for this at stefan.dowless. And uh, go ahead and check me out there. And thanks for watching this one, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Peace out.